My name is Ratan and this is your 14th pre-class video. In this small pre-class video, we will be discussing about multi-threading. What is multi-threading? What is a thread? And what is the meaning of thread safety? So let's get started. Now, before learning about the multi-threading, we should know about the what necessitate multi-threading. And for that, we need to know about what is a multitasking. Multitasking. What is a multitasking? And then after we are going to discuss about multi-threading. Now let's see that one example here, then you will understand this multitasking very well. Let's say that I have a particular class. I have a particular class. And in that class, I have defined some functionality. Function one, function two, function three. These functions have hangs, having some statements are there. Okay. Now let's see here. Then after I have a main method, Imagine this is a main method. And from there, since these are the non-static methods, I need to create the object. I have created the object and I just call all the method one by one. Function one, function two, function three. So just like that normal application. So these functions will be executed individually. That means this function will be executed one by one. One by one, it will be executed. Now, normally if the class is compiled and JVM executes the program, then the order of execution is what? First function, Fun one will be called and after completion of function one that means after entire completion of function one control come back to the main method that means if you are calling this method control will gonna come to here it will enter into the first one statement in the first uh, function one to execute all the functionality and then control will come to the calling place that means here here it will come then after control will call the second one then function two will be called then after again, control will move to the function two, executes completely. Then after come to the calling place and then after function three will be loaded and here function three will be executed and then your main method will be completed. This is the way how the function will be executed. Now let's assume that function one has some statement which involves the data transfer. Let's say that function one having some statement which is going to transfer the data of let's say that 10 GB or one GB. 1GB data, some statement is there which is responsible to transfer this 1GB of data or 10, 10 GB of data. Then what will happen? Now, we know that data transfer is not a job of the processor. It is a, not a job of CPU. It is a duty of a separate individual circuit DMA, direct memory access, which functions under the control of the processor. That means which will be monitored by the processor. So what will happen here? Since function one has a data transfer, processor assign the job of data transferring to this DMA circuit, to this DMA circuit. And during that time, the processor should be remain idle. That means what will happen till this 10 GB data will transfer, your processor will sit idle because it is executed by DMA circuit and your processor is doing nothing, nothing. So this made software developer to think the efficiency of the processor would be increased if the processor is made to do some what other useful work during this idle state. And the useful work is nothing but executing other functions method present in the program. Now I can tell like that, hey processor, if you are sitting right now, because this job, you say that this data transfer job, this function one is having the data transfer job of 10 GB. Now this DMA circuit is taking the responsibility of transferring 10 GB, but here, your processor is sitting idle. Then what will happen? I can tell a processor, if you are sitting idle, why don't you execute this function? Why don't you execute this function? If they are no way related with the function one, if they are individual function, so that time what you can do, you can execute this function as it is. And otherwise you can execute this function as like that. So this necessitate what? This need the lead of the concept of multitasking, multitasking. That means I can tell if you are sitting idle. So remember that processor is also an electronic circuit. And at any instance of time, it can execute only one statement. It cannot execute multiple statements simultaneously. So multitasking is what? It is a concept of executing multiple task functionality simultaneously. Functionality may be from the same domain. That means from the same application or from the different domain, different application, different application. We are going to talk about that one. That functionality could be from the same application or could be from the different application. 
Now, if we apply multitasking in our example, then the part of function one will get executed. Then control will switch us back to the another function. Now here also some part of the function gets executed and then control switches back to the third function. And again, control will come back to the function one. Now it continues function one from where it had stopped earlier. That means it will move forth and back between this functionality. Some part of function one will execute, then control will switch us back to this function. Then control will switch us back to this one. Then control will come back again and it will execute remaining like that. It will going to switch between one functionality to one functionality. So that which functionality is having taking too much time, it will be as it is, but the remaining functionality will be executed, will be executed completely. So now we can see that output. We can see the output and we feel three functionalities executing simultaneously. Now this switching between one functionality to another functionality will happen in a nanosecond. So we can see that we can feel like that it is executing simultaneously. Now the concept of multitasking come into the existence to avoid the ideal state of the CPU, ideal state of the CPU. But there is some other advantages will be there. In multitasking, a part of functionality, the thing is that basically multitasking came into the existence to what? To ideal, to avoid the ideal state of the CPU, but other advantage is also there. Your functionality will be executed what? Independently. Previously, until your function one is completely executed, your function two has to wait, has to wait. Until function two has completely executed, function three has to wait. That means there will be a dependency among them. But if you apply multitasking, this functionality will be executed individually and there will be what? No dependency between them. That means what? This function will be executed, this function will be executed, this function three will be executed simultaneously. That means this function two need not wait till function one completely execute if you apply the multitasking. Now, next thing is that in multitasking, a part of the functionality is executed at one time. That means I told some part of the functionality will execute of function one, then control switches to the function two. And that part, how many statement will be executed? In that particular part, how many statement will be executed will be decided by scheduling. Scheduling. So scheduling is a very important concept. So scheduling, it is a process in which a specific time period is allocated for a particular functionality where the control remain in that particular functionality for that specific time period. Once the time period lapse, control switches to another function with another time slice and so on. So a specific time period is allocated for a particular period that is called scheduling. Once in between that time specific time, the control remain in that functionality. When the time period is lapsed, control will move to the next function. Now scheduling is supervised by the scheduler. There is one component called scheduler. It will be, it can be an OS scheduler or can be a thread scheduler. So if it is a OS scheduler, that means if you are different, different applications are there, then OS scheduler operating system has a particular scheduler component is there. And in JVM, you have thread type of thread scheduler is there. Now thread scheduler in Java is a part, part of the JVM that decide which thread should run, which how many specific time period will be there. The time slice, allocated will be in a nanosecond. Thus by time hour, I recognize the execution of one part control switches to the another part of the program. Now, what is the advantage of multitasking? It is invented to avoid the ideal state of the CPU, but makes the function get executed independently and mostly used because of the small project, ideal state of the CPU is not a big concern. So mostly this is the main important reason. Functionality will be executed independently. Now there are two types of multitasking. One is a process-based multitasking and another is a thread-based multitasking. Now process-based multitasking is what? Suppose if you have a two different application that run in a two different domain, two different application, one application and another application. Both are running in a different, different memory domain. Then if you are applying the multitasking, then what will happen? Some part of this statement you executed in this domain, this application, then control will switch back over here. That means you can play lots of applications simultaneously or in our operating system. You can open the torrent, you can open the download manager, you can right, open the your notepad and you can open your editor as well or any other software. So simultaneously they are going to what? Executing here and here the scheduling will done by what? Operating system scheduler, OS scheduler. Scheduler. Now there is another type of multi-threading. What is that? 
multitasking that is a thread based multitasking in which only one application is there and that application different different functionality will be executed simultaneously that means same application but in that application the functionality different different functions or methods will executed simultaneously and here your thread scheduler will gonna do that scheduling thread scheduler will perform the scheduling now java supports thread based multitasking so process based multitasking concept of executing more than one program more than one program or you can say process simultaneously which are present in different location of ram is known as process based multitasking here processor has to maintain the address of both the program since control has to shift from one part of the ram to the another part of the ram and it will increase the overhead on the processor so to maintain that address which application we are maintaining and here os will perform the scheduling that means operating system scheduler will perform the scheduling thread based multitasking concept of executing more than one functionality one more than one functionality simultaneously belonging to the same memory domain same memory domain that means same application is known as thread based multitasking and here thread scheduler will do the scheduling now what is a thread so an application when it is under execution is called a process a particular application when it is under execution it is known as process and a thread is a part or sub process of an application it is a small part of your application it is a small part of your process that means if application is running so it is called process even your java application is running that is a one process but in the java application if some thread you are going to able, able if you are able to start that is called what one particular thread which is a sub part or sub process of an application so the legal definition of what a thread is a separate flow of execution that will execute some functionality of a program with other part of the program of the other part of the same program other part of the same program simultaneously simultaneously that is known as what a thread it is separate flow of execution it has the same another call stack another separate flow that execute some particular functionality of a particular program with the other part of the same program simultaneously now what is a multi threaded application multi threaded application in java listen carefully this is a very very important point here every program application has a default flow of execution default flow of execution and that is called what your main flow so if you start the running your application your main flow will take care and your main flow will going to execute the application that means your main method will start and who will start the main application jvm and that is called your main flow main flow main method here main flow will start executing the application and a default thread called main thread so in each java application there is a one by default thread is there that is called main thread main thread and main thread is responsible to execute this default flow of execution default flow of execution so in any java application one main thread will be there and that main thread is responsible to execute your application and now we can start if we can start another flow of execution another thread along with the main thread simultaneously then it is called multi threaded application program so in any java application there is a one by default thread is there which is called main thread which is responsible to execute your main method main method and along with this main method if we are able to start our own flow of execution own flow of another execution then we can say it is what multi threaded application or a particular program this is what multi threading now how we implement this multi threading in java implementing multi threading is super easy super easy compared to other programming language so basically implementing thread in java is a two step process first is what first of all we have to define the functionality which can be executed as a thread along with the main thread that means we need to define some task to the worker some task to the worker that means which functionality we want to execute as a thread and then this functionality should start as a thread then we should just first define the task to the worker and then assign that task to the worker this is the only two step process to implementing thread in java first define the task which we want to execute as a thread and then assign that task to a worker or you can say to a thread and start the thread start that task start that task that task now the signature of a functionality or function using which 
we implement thread or what job a thread has to do that means by using which we are defining a particular task is defined in an interface by name runnable runnable inside this is a runnable interface this interface belongs to java.lang package and this interface has only one method that is public void run so we need to take a class which is going to implement this runnable interface and override this run method and inside this run method define your functionality which you want to execute as a separate flow of execution which we want to execute as a along with your main thread so that task you need to define inside this run method and now for which we have to provide a body and after providing the body we need to execute this functionality as a thread as a thread we need to execute this run method that means simultaneously with the other part of the program so there is a class by name thread present in the lang package only which has a method called start start method this start method is used to execute a given functionality as a separate thread so two thing one is that inside runnable interface there is an interface run where we want to define a task and by using thread class start method we are going to start that particular task so your thread class start method is like a worker which will going to start that task whatever you have defined inside run method that is the only two step process to start a thread in java now the start method recognizes the run method of runnable interface and their run method is executed as a separate individual thread here thread class is like a what worker who start who has to start the job individually defined by run method of runnable interface so thread class and runnable interface are the two structures using which we implement thread based multitasking in java that is one thread class and one runnable interface so runnable interface has in having a method run using which you are going to define the task and thread class having a method called start using which you are going to start a particular task so this is the only two structure both runnable and thread class thread class and this is a runnable is an interface both belongs to java dot lang package so this is a runnable interface it is having only one method you can say this is method is also a functional interface and now there is a one thread class now thread class also internally you implements runnable interface so it also implements runnable interface so run method is overridden here so thread class internally implements runnable interface and override the run method with empty implementation so it has overridden this implementation run method also so we implement thread either in the following two way two way that means either by implementing runnable interface either you can implement this runnable interface and override the run method or the second one is what by extending the thread class by extending the thread class itself that means if you extend the thread class here run method is overridden already by the thread class with empty implementation you need to again override this run method and define your functionality so it's a very simple either you can use the implementing implement runnable and override run or you extend a thread and override the run method in both cases you have to override the run method and you need to provide the definition you need to provide the task of what you want to start so let's see that one example then after we are going to discuss so either we can use class a implement runnable and override the run method and provide your task now second way class a extend a thread and here also you need to override the run method override the run method so because thread class has already overridden you need to override it once again because thread class has overridden with empty implementation they have not given nothing on that so you need to provide your you need to again override this one and you need to write the functionality which you want to execute as a particular thread now internally thread class implements runnable interface and override run method with implementation we have just now seen that so this is the thread class pseudo code thread class implements runnable and it has overridden this runnable inter run method override this run method with empty implementation nothing is there and after that the thread class having the start method which is having some other methods thread class having n number of methods those methods are also there so this run method is overridden inside the thread class so we have two approach either by using which approach so whether we extend the thread class or implement runnable interface directly we have two approach either we can extend the thread class override the run method 
either implement runnable and override the run method. We have to use the run method of runnable interface directly or indirectly. If you are implementing runnable, you are directly overriding this run method. If you are extending thread class, you are indirectly overriding run method, but you have to override the run method to implement your functionality. So this is a way how we can write that override the run method and how we can uh, use the particular thread. Let's see that one example in an action, then you will understand that. So I'm going to show you both example. So first of all, I want to use a particular thread by extending that particular. So suppose that this is a my class main, I'm gonna extend thread class. Thread class belongs to java.lang package. And now I need to define some functionality. So I need to override this run method, run method. I need to override this run method. So run method is overridden because inside the thread class also run method is there with empty implementation because thread class internally implements runnable. And now here I'm gonna define some functionality. So here, let's say that I'm defining a functionality for, I'm taking a loop int i is equal to zero, i less than 10 and I plus plus. So this is a particular loop and this loop will gonna print this. Let's say that inside run of inside run method plus I. So 10 times this line will be printed. And after that, it will gonna print system.out.println end of run method. So this task I want to execute. I want to execute along with my main task, main flow, main flow. So here one main flow will going to main thread will be there, main thread and this line will be there. Now what I need to do, since my class extend the thread, main class also has become, it has become a thread class, thread class. So thread class, all the functionality, run, start method and all the method will be inherited in the main class. So in order to start that, what I can do that, I can create the main class object, m is equal to new main. And simply I can call m dot, if I call, see here, this run is a method, method. If I call this run method as it is, so if I call that m dot run, yes, we can call. But if I call like this, it will be called as a normal method. It will be called as a normal method. Your run method will be called as a normal method. But if I want to call as a thread, then I need to call m dot start. Start. Start method belongs to thread class, which is inherited in the main. So it has start. So when we call the start method internally, start method will pick this run method and it will start your thread. That means here at this line, you have only one thread that is your main thread. Main thread is there, which is responsible to execute your main method, main method. But once you call this m dot start here, another thread is started. That means here your second thread will be started. Second thread will be started. So after that second thread, this second thread will run simultaneously along with your main thread, main thread. So let's put some other statement inside your main thread. That is what, again, I'm taking a for loop. And here also into, let's say that I is equal to uh, 20 or let's say 50 and I less than 60 and I plus plus. And it will just gonna print inside main thread. Plus I, and after that, I'm just printing system.out.println end of main. So this task, that means this flow will be executed by main thread, main thread. So this is the task of your main thread, main thread. And here it will start. You have started the another thread, that thread simultaneously run with the main thread and that thread responsibility is to execute the run method, run method. Now let's run the program and see the output here. Now, since both threads started simultaneously, your main thread and your th 
thread. That means another thread, if you have started simultaneously, you can't guess the output. Every time if you run, you will get the different type of output. Right now it is showing main thread and then after end of main thread and then after your run method. But if you run it once again, you'll get the, you can't guess the output. Sometime control will be there in the main thread. Sometime control will be in the another thread. So if you run it continuously, you may see the different, different output. It will totally depend upon thread scheduler, which thread is giving the highest priority and which thread will getting the chance first. How much time? So right now it is coming different, different type of output, uh, same type of, let me run it multiple time. You will see that different type of output sometime. See that this time your another thread is started and then your main thread is there. Now, sometime you will get that mix up out output. See that here, here your another thread, then main thread, and then after another thread. So you can get that you can't predict the output because both threads are running simultaneously and it totally depend upon what your thread scheduler, which thread is getting the chance first, which thread is getting the chance first, how your thread is executing. Now, the next thing is that, let's see that this is the way I have implementing, I have implemented the thread. But the problem with this approach is what, imagine if you have extend this thread class to implement this particular task or execute at this particular task as a separate flow of execution or separate thread. Now, if you extend the thread class, as we know that Java in Java, a class can extend only one class, one class. Now, if any other important class, if you want to extend, you cannot, you cannot do that one. That means you are going to lose the biggest advantage of object orientation. That is what your inheritance concept. This main class will now no longer will gonna extend any other class. So we have a, another approach. If your class, if you need to extend any other class, then we have a, another approach. What is that? We can define a class. Let's say that X and which is gonna implement runnable, runnable. Which is gonna implement this runnable interface and override this run method. Override this run method because it has only one method. So let's cut this task from here, which we want to execute and put it over put it over here. Now, inside a separate class, I have used this runnable implementing and override this run method again here in this case also. Now this class need not write like that. And this task class also, I'm just removing this extending the thread. Like this. Now, how to start that? I want to here, I want to execute that task, which is defined inside the another class of the run method along with this task I want to execute simultaneously along with my main thread, main thread, main task. So what to do in that case, this object is not required. You need to create the object of class X, X1 is equal to new X. You, yes, you can directly call X1 dot run method, X1 dot run method you can call, but if you call, it will become a normal call, normal call and your functionality will become, it is still, a single threaded application, single threaded application. Now I want to run this task, whatever defined inside this run method as a separate flow of execution along with my main thread of this class. So what do I need to do? I need to create a thread class object. Thread class object thread T is equal to new thread. And here in the constructor of thread class, I need to pass this X1. I need to pass the X1. That means a class which is implementing runnable interface and over it in this run method, run method. So I need to pass this one in a constructor. And then after that, t dot start, you can call this thread. So once I will call that here, that means this thread will gonna start that, that run method. So here, what I have done, I have assigned a task in inside a different class and that class task, I'm going to start with my main thread. So here I have just, created a thread class object and inside the thread class, I pass this runnable, runnable object. That means the class which has implemented runnable and defined that task over here. You can skip this line and you can run it over here as well. That is new X. 
and then d dot start at this line your second thread will start which will run simultaneously along with the main thread and you will get the similar type of output similar type of output you are going to get you can't guess the output here because your main thread and another thread started simultaneously your main thread and another thread started simultaneously if you run this program multiple time you can't predict the output here sometime main thread sometime your child thread will gonna work on that so here this thread is started by main so main will be a parent thread and this thread will become a child thread this thread will become a child thread so this is a way we can start that threading multi threading in java in multi threading there might be a chances is what we can create multiple threads and we can start them simultaneously but there might be a chance of what uh, thread safety as well imagine this task this task this run method is having a particular task let's say that some task is there to share some particular resource share some particular resource and what we can do we can start another thread we can take another thread and let's say that this will be the t1 and this will be the t2 and both are sharing both are sharing let me just use this x1 x1 and x1 here also that means both threads are sharing the same resource same resource x1 that means same task and the same task both thread will gonna start that so what i can do t1 dot start and t2 dot start now what will happen here this thread will execute this task that means from 0 to 10 in its own call stack this thread will do that one try to do the same task in its own call stack in its own call stack so if you run that one so two times this run method will be executed and here your main method is executed so at that point at that point what will happen at this line three threads are there in your program one is your main thread which is executing the remaining part of the program and here the second thread and this is the third thread third thread in that case what will happen if you run that with this program you will get that two time run method will be executed and main method will be executed and all three thread will execute simultaneously simultaneously all this thread will execute and you can't guess the output if you run this program multiple time you can't guess the output but problem is that with this approach what is that if you have any data which is going to updated which is going to get updated so if you are using the same resource there might be a race condition race condition imagine here the data is what updating updating the data and or retrieving the data retrieving the data from the database so one thread if try to update the data and one thread try to read the data there might be a chance of race condition and the your data inconsistency problem will be there to solve the data inconsistency problem you need to use synchronized keyword synchronized keyword inside your method that means this functionality or any functionality you need to put a synchronization and that with the help of synchronization we achieve thread safety in java so this is a way of what sharing same resource to multiple threads might be a chance of what risk condition they may corrupt the data one thread the data inconsistency problem might be there for example let's say that you have a particular bank account and in that you have some balance some balance is there some balance is there and now you went to a atm atm so one particular thread you start to withdrawing some amount we want to withdraw some amount same time i just entered my atm card and i entered the amount let's say that in my balance is what 10000 and i have entered the atm card in my atm machine i entered the amount i want to withdraw 8000 8000 so i want to withdraw 8000 from the atm i have entered the pin and all those things and same time i have opened my paytm wallet paytm wallet i have given the amount let's say that 9000 9000 9000 and both tasks i'm trying to execute simultaneously simultaneously so here what will happen it will gonna use that thread safety concept otherwise what will happen it will gonna check the balance first if it is yes then control will come and it will execute that and here your balance will become what 2000 2000 and then same time if paytm also if you try to do the deposit that means withdraw the amount your main balance is 10000 and here 9000 that means it will there might be a chance of data inconsistency so by using synchronized 
you need to get the lock of that particular object. That means one will come first, they will get the lock, and until this transaction of ATM is finished, your Paytm has to wait, has to wait. If Paytm get the chance first, Paytm thread gets the chance first, that means your ATM thread has to wait, has to wait. By this way, you use that by using synchronization, we can, we can achieve the thread safety. So this is the way we can achieve, implement the multi-threading and multi-threading is a very important concept and very interesting concept as well. Thank you for watching.